Forty chess. Yeah. Forty chess. Huh. Forty chess. Let's get it. Forty chess. Huh. Forty chess. Hey. Hey. Forty chess. This a trade show. Patreon where the trades go. Tap in and watch. That's what you came for. Ain't gotta say my name. They know my name, bro. What's good, what's good man? We got McNutted in ATM. Always start off the show with a trade from them. You should always make sure that your trade is in. Patreon, why not be a Patreon? Know you wish you could spend every day with them. Tap in and say what you gonna say with them. Stop home and can fill up a stadium. Next time you log in, make sure that you bring a friend. We about to kick off, let the day begin. Go follow the socials. 40 Chess FF is posted. If your trade is an F, you get roasted. Go like and subscribe for the crew. Apple, Spotify, and the YouTube. You know cool. We got the wall too. Let us give you a walkthrough. Forty chess. This is forty chess. What's up, everybody? Welcome back into the Dynasty Trade Show. We missed y'all last week, but we back. We got enough deals. Kind of that that the crappy time of the season, at least for Dynasty. I mean, I love it, uh, but trade deals. Not actually going down. We got a lot of casuals. Not everybody's a dynasty degenerate like you, the person watching, who needs us injected into our veins. But yeah, we got enough. We scrounged up enough, Adam. We got deals. So we got stuff to talk about this week. But first, we got tons I mean, of we, trades, man. We, t- we took a week off, man. How you doing? Like, I was fiending. I know. Some dynasty <clears throat> deals I got to talk I'm, about. I'm not even going to lie. I'm sitting there like Saturday. It's 10 o'clock, and we the video hadn't dropped. I'm like, oh, shit. What did I do? I mess something up? And then I realized now we just we didn't have it. So. I've been waiting for this one, buddy. Next Saturday, ready for this to drop. Um, if you are watching this, you are one of the Dynasty Degenerates, and you had a deal you know, that could have kept the show going last week. Patreon.com forward slash South Harmon, man. Buy bucks. You know, hit us up, man. Let us know. We will happily get your deal on the show. Right now, it's tweener season. You know, Mike, it's like people want to play Dynasty, but you know, they're, they're either too you know, into their values or they don't want to get fleeced. They just want to stay put. It's all right. We have Iowa Michael starting us off this week. Mike, talk to us, buddy. Let's talk about the NFC East. Love it. 12-team, super flex, PPR, lineup, start 11. Go ahead. Floor is yours. It is a uh, a post-NFL draft. So, let's put that on. Really? Speaking of tweeners, yeah. Yeah, so post one. It's an an older league. Uh, Okay. Been in it for a while. Uh, Won it the inaugural year, then tore it all down, rebuilt for a couple years, and now we're right back. All right, we were in contention last year, and the team's looking real good for the future. But this was a, a trade that came up. Somebody else had asked about it in our Discord, right? Just posted a poll and like, what do you guys think? And uh, it was basically just Olave for the 106. And while I'm sitting there looking at it, I go, "Damn, man, I really love Chris Olave." But right, worst case scenario for this, it, how much we love this class, and just projecting it already before the combine, before you really start to get maybe a late riser or two. Looking at it, Adam, we got like a tier of seven that are pretty damn good. And we talked about it with Walrus on the AMA. That might actually be eight because we weren't even accounting for the fact that one, Mr. J.J. McCarthy, right, is starting to get some steam, starting to get some hype. Uh, D. Bros out there touting him. Great show with him on uh, Fantasy Pros, him and Thor going, going over uh, their love for J.J. McCarthy. I'm not, I'm not all the way in yet. Okay, not all the way in yet. And then you see some stuff out there. I saw a wild mock draft where they had the Bears taking him at two, like as the second quarterback off the board, like crazy stuff. Yeah, man. So, so if I'm sitting there thinking, that best case scenario, maybe something like a Jaden Daniels or a Drake May or a Malik Neighbors falls to six, I would take them in a heartbeat over, over Chris Olave. If J.J. McCarthy got the requisite draft capital, in a super flex league like this, you know, and by requisite, I mean, if he goes to the Falcons at eight, holy shit. Okay. Sure. Like to me, that would mean Viking, top 15, right? The, yeah. He goes to the Vikings at 11, <laughs> something <laughs> along those lines. He goes top 15. That's pretty good. A uh, pretty good assessment right there. I, I'd have a real strong case for taking him over Chris Olave. Now say all that happened. Right. Right. All that happened, but I missed out at the one Oh six. They're like, Mike, you might not get that guy. Well, somebody's going to fall into my lap, whether that's a Neighbors or a Roma Dunze. A Roma Dunze, right. 
And if it's Roma Dunze, it's like, okay, I just re-rolled from one into the other, reset the age curve a little bit. And you were talking about it on a BDGE video this week. A mock draft had Roma Dunze going there to New Orleans to play alongside Chris Olave, and it's like, what do you do as a fantasy manager? And like, who do you love more? It's a tough choice. Sure. Like, who's the number one? I think they're both phenomenal, uh, but this is like worst case outlook, right? The worst case outlook is I roll it back into a Roma Dunze type, and I go, okay, so what? I treaded water. But the key thing is you got something on top of it. It was going to be two guys that are going to be ranked very, very closely in a tier, tight-lipped. And what do we always say about our tiers? You give me anything on top, I just go ahead and take the package because I have a little bit of a fallback. So... You include a 206, and it's like, I, done. Yeah, I think I think that's pretty much where this deal... It, to me, it hinges on it. Now, if you made the trade for the 106, and you're like just either very bullish about the trade picks, um, the way you can trade picks in your league, or what their, you know, their worth is, something like that, I could understand it. For me, I'd probably be a little more torn at the 106 straight up. I'd have to know a lot more about my specific league. You had the 206 in here, Mike, and it's... The tiebreaker's over, you know? Like, I'm 206, done. done. So, and I know for some people, like, man, that doesn't seem like enough. And I, I like to be a little bit more on the get the picks early side, right? Let this, because here's the thing, Mike, at, at the minimum, all that stuff you're talking about, that doesn't include what if Brian Thomas was to somehow be a top 10 draft pick. Like, yes. there, there's all kinds of other things, like what happens in the combine of some of these guys that we're really not loving. They go out and destroy the combine. All of a sudden, their draft stock goes up. All that can probably happen at this point is the picks gain more value, gain more steam until the draft hits. So thousand percent. at this point, you're just basically basking in that uh, the opportunity for that to continue to roll up. Then you can make the decision of making the picks or not. So for me, that's where I liquidate here. I think it's one of those things, too, if you go back to the, the old school roots, right, and you look at startup picks, where the 106 is going and where Chris Olave is going probably isn't too far off, Adam. And the one thing you said, right, the pick is going to go up in value. When you put an actual player name to it, you know that's going to go up by like a round from where this 106 pick is. It, it happens every year. You don't believe me? Go look. we got historical data to show it. <laughs> Adam and I have been doing this for a while now, and it happens every single year. Right? Adiko used to have a great tracker on it, on his uh, old school Google sheet, if you remember that, right? Where yeah, it man. actually showed month by month where it went, and it's always up. <laughs> It's right. always up <laughs> for the minute. And, so the minute you're drafted kickers <laughs> as placeholders for rookie picks, just the number to when that player gets drafted in the NFL, we have a consensus ADP the week after it's just a, it's a steady climb all right. the way up. Well, our next video drop in um, from the same, <clears throat> we recorded at the same time, Mike is from that same mock draft. We then said where we think they'll go in startups. And it, I got a uh, spoiler alert. You're going to see that it goes up, right? Um, all those pick names, when those picks turn to names, excuse me, they will be going up. Mike, I think this one here makes too much sense for you, um, frankly. I don't. I understand there's some risk, right? Like if you end up taking the 206 and it doesn't pan out, and then like you said, you're at a Roma Dunze versus a Lave, and it's kind of a lateral move. But that's again, that's again like if we said that the 206 misses and you just only get the 106, right? Like even right. then, I still think you're probably breaking even. So, um, I, I like this trade for you too much, personally. Right now, they're uh, they're separated by a round, so three hundred seven <coughs> versus uh, four hundred four hundred eight on our ADP. But that's going to go up. They're going to be a lot closer. Yeah, and uh, I think this is a good time to get to the haters club, man. You know, twelve the team, club. twelve team superflex PPR lineup start nine. Speaking of the haters club, man, uh, Jalen Hurts has himself some serious hating going on. Haters. Lining up at the door, my friend. Uh, Sims being up there as maybe one of the top in the country. I mean, this guy just hates him. I don't know what he has to do. Yeah. But th mad. at this point, Mike, I talked about – it's funny. The first two here, I said there's five people that we should be selling in Dynasty, considering Do Dynasty sell candidates. Look at the first two trades, Mike. CJ Stroud, Chris Olave. For all you out there yapping at me, telling me I don't know shit, well – Here's real trades, which I want the other side both times. Mike, this is crazy. Like, a third to a second round, especially a 202 in this class, that's a, it's a big deal for me, right? So even it's if you told me these are the same tier quarterbacks, I want this. For me, I actually, I still technically have Jalen Hurts in a tier ahead of CJ Stroud, but, like, even if you just had him tiered as the same, 
I'll take the 202 over the third. That's a, it's enough for me to move off of the other quarterback. Honest question, if I told you that was a 26 first random, would you rather have the 202 <clears throat> or the 26 first? That one, you're making me think a little bit, but I probably would rather take Jalen Hurts in the 202. But there at least it's a little, you know, I mean, we're talking the 26 first versus the 25 third, a different conversation. But I still probably think I'll take the Jalen Hurts side as long as I don't feel like my team's in the range of going to poo-poo land pretty soon, you know? <laughs> Hurts or Stroud, straight up. Hurts. <laughs> this is this is nuts. It, it, so our ADP has CJ Stroud. He's only one <clears throat> pick ahead of Jalen Hurts. So there's enough people out there. Keep trade cut is fucking insane. Like wh- where they rank those those two. <laughs> it's it's nuts. And uh, I'm fully aboard the train. Like if I could sell CJ Stroud for these prices, don't even care. I've sold them for actually less than this. I didn't get a Jalen Hurts back, but uh, might be featured on next week's trade show. <laughs> Right. L- love to it see just it. got done not too long ago but love to see this it. is easy for castle black this is a flex flex and a half yeah it, and it, uh it is. timmy timmy might actually be chris uh, chris sims uh you know sleeper username oh I think, at this point you know what that Maybe could be a, a nice little disguise i like that man and now i'll just say if you are someone it's not for me mike but if you made this trade like one for one and you really had cj stroud ahead of hertz and that's your tier difference not for me. I wouldn't really approve of that trade, but I, I could see it. But there's no – to me, if you have CJ ahead of Hertz, like this this pick difference of 202, which we're talking about in a 12-team league like this, that's the 14th player. This is a good class, man. Like that could be a very reasonably good player. That could be a player that starts at one point on this lineup start 19. Like for a 25 third, that difference is too much for me. It really is. <laughs> Let me ask you if you just took the 202 off. You still do the trade, Stroud in the third for uh, for Jalen Hurts. Ooh, that one's interesting. I think I probably would because I don't really put a ton of stock into that third. I feel like right now I know because I see shit like this that I don't have to do that. But yeah, if you told me like, hey man, Jalen Hurts can be had. If you add a third to Stroud, I can I can go get it. I'd cons- I'd strongly consider it. I, I I think right now like I just know that that's not what it costs. But yes, it's not something I'd be against doing. I could tell you there is not a format out there where I wouldn't. And that includes one quarterback. <laughs> it's a one QB league. You could have that fucking third, man. You can yeah. have CJ Stroud. I'll take Jalen Hurts. Right. Because in one QB, I got a hammer quarterback. I got the dude. The dude. Josh Allen could be the dude, too. So the one of the dudes. Yeah. <laughs> one of these dudes. Those guys are incredible just because of what their rushing floor is for fantasy football purposes. And yeah. don't give me this shit, man. He just signed a giant contract, too, so there, you can throw any questions about whether the Eagles would move on or not. This fucking guy's playing football for him. For it's, the, it's the Kyler the stuff, Mike. Of future. Yes. It's the Kyler stuff without the injury. <laughs> right? Yeah. Like, yep. just hate him. He's got a contract. Doesn't matter. I'm with you. Um, I'll take Hurts ahead of CJ Stroud. I think right now, for me um, – Hertz is in tier one and then Stroud in tier two. But if you told me they're in the same tier, just principle wise, this is too much to make up the difference if you had them in the same tier. And if you don't like have them in the you, if you don't have them in the same tier, I think you really should assess your tiers personally. I like it because you're nice too. Like if you have them in the same tier. I'm telling if you. If you have them in the same tier, uh you should reevaluate your tiers. I'm telling you, there's people that have them ahead, Mike. So um reevaluating <laughs> you your re-evaluate tiers. That too. <laughs> That's where I'm at. Okay, Mike. Similarly. The 106 you had for Chris Olave. Here's another person. Man, are people listening? Garrett Wilson, I tell you, is a sell. All right. Yeah. Garrett Wilson, the 105 here, Mike. Where are you at? Lineup start 10. Uh, it's a full PPR. This is like a lot for like my premium, trade. Sorry. It's a lot like my trade without the extra the juice. The extra juice, you know? but you go up the one slot, juice. right? Yep. Yep. And uh, I'm going to go with the 105 here. It's a lot closer. Because you just didn't get that extra piece, but I'm all for it just in the process, right? Like, it's a good process play. Sell Garrett Wilson while he's high. Worst case scenario, you're, you're landing yourself. Like, let's say that is Malik Neighbors right there. Malik Neighbors or Garrett Wilson. There's going to be people who debate that back and forth. Like, who do they like more? Yada, yada, yada. They're both going to come in. Great prospects coming off of a great year and more than likely uh, going to have similar NFL draft capital, like invested in them. Top 10 NFL draft capital. So, it's like you just reset it by a couple years. I, people will be like, well, neighbors might go to a bad team or he might go to this. 
Let's not act like the Jets are a perfect situation, Adam, because you brought this Jets up before. Jets are the before. best situation out there, man. Come <laughs> on. Aaron Rodgers is in his 40s, coming off a major injury, and the last time we saw Aaron Rodgers wasn't the gra- for a full season wasn't the greatest fantasy production, nah, right? It wasn't the old Aaron Rodgers. It wasn't. Let's face it. He didn't really elevate the weapons, the young weapons that Green Bay had. And what they do? They just added like a Jaden Reed and an Octavian Wicks. But like the same cast of characters was basically there with Aaron Rodgers and a little bit more healthy at the time because Christian Watson played a lot more games in his rookie year than he did this last year. And then Jordan Love comes in and all of a sudden we're like, you man, you guys check out these these uh, Green Bay weapons? Damn, man. Like, like it took Jordan Love for me to get in on Romeo Dobbs. Just let, let that sink in for just a second, all right? Not an indictment against Aaron Rodgers because he is going to go down as a Hall of Famer and one of the best to ever do it. But let's face facts here. There's a reason he was a back-end QB, too, his last year in Green Bay playing a full <clears> season. So there are some question marks about New York. The offensive line's terrible. Garrett Wilson really doesn't have any help. He is a one-man show at this point <laughs> other than Brees Hall. But in the receiving game, it's like it's Brees Hall dump-offs or Garrett Wilson. Right? I don't trust Alan Lazard. I don't trust Tyler Conklin, uh, Gibson. Oh, what is it? Xavier Gibson. <laughs> Xavier nice Gibson, man. Yeah. <laughs> He's a deep flyer in best ball. That gives me return yards. Yeah, That's I was going to say, I like him in best ball, you know, on the bottom there, right? So at the very end of the day, like if I had to do it and I had to pick a side, it's the 105 for me. Like I feel comfortable about it because he might fall into something that's actually like, oh, shit, man. You believe Drake may have fell in this draft? Or can you believe <laughs> nobody drafted Jane Daniels even though he got, you know, top eight NFL draft capital? This is nuts. So there's a good possibility for that to happen. Worst case, kind of like he falls into a neighbor's or a dune's a. It is a decent enough tight end premium. I'd have to look at the warp graph that maybe a Brock Bowers might even be in play here. So – at the end of the day, I like the trade. Selling Garrett Wilson for the 105 or better feels yeah. like the smart move. Yeah, I think, too, um, the way I'll say it, Mike, you, we talked about I, – I want you to kind of, like, zoom out a little bit on your feelings of this trade right right now, everybody listening. Okay, so if you go back to what we were talking about before, Mike, and how the pick values, what we see is the kicker placeholder draft picks, and then when the players slide in, how that continually moves up. And if you think about that concept, for me, one of the reasons why here I'm willing to make it, especially at the 105 spot, Mike, because I don't have to necessarily like worry is there, uh, is it no? Do I have to fade the noise or not with JJ McCarthy, or is Jaden Daniels really not going to be a dr- top draft pick? I don't have to go into all that. Like, there's still room for one of those things not to come to fruition. And at 105 here, I'm between neighbors, Adunze, Marv Harrison Jr and three quarterbacks, right? I could even take one of them off, and I'm still there. And the reason I say that is even if you want, don't get the receiver that you feel better about than Garrett Wilson, or you don't feel better about that, Mike, if this ends up being a quarterback, just on the clock, right, once these picks start happening, you're telling me I have, what is the 105? Let's say it's quarterback three. Let's say it's Drake May going at pick four or five overall in the draft. All of a sudden, Mike, somebody that during this draft type, they may have – a tier ahead quarterback like a uh, Herbert, a rich Lamar, Joe Burrow. They may say, man, like what if I now all of a sudden I can use this one five that someone's going to pencil in as Drake may or whoever it's going to be JJ McCarthy. I also have a bag of other stuff to add to that. Oh man. All right. I, I need, I know I need to get some depth. I'm having a different conversation. Like I can get myself into a completely different flexibility of trading I can come and try to make a trade to anybody when I do something like that because I have the 105. The flexibility that this is going to offer me versus just what is in stone, Garrett Wilson, is one of the most like overlooked pieces, I believe, in a trade like this one. Thousand percent. Garrett Wilson doesn't get you into elite quarterback comp- conversation, too. If that was a move you wanted to make down the road, <laughs> exactly. Uh, drafting a Drake May, a Jaden Daniels, et cetera, will. Like, it puts you in the room with somebody where they're like, oh, yeah, I can see tearing down from Josh Allen or Jalen Hurts or Patrick Mahomes to this rookie plus, you know, plus the stuff you add on to it. You know, I could probably throw two first-round picks and Garrett Wilson at somebody who's got Josh Allen, and they're going to be like, and what else? <laughs> like, I'm right. not getting a quarterback right. back. What else are you giving me? Like, I need a quarterback Keep it coming. Back. Keep it coming. Right. Different story if I'm throwing Jane Daniels at a Josh Allen owner with two first round picks. They're like, oh, this, this isn't a bad offer. This is pretty fair here. I get the quarterback, I get some teardown picks. So, and 
to the point I did look up the warp on this one. The tight ends are pretty serviceable in this with the tight end premium and the way the uh, the roster settings are. So they, God uh, forbid, Mike they, Brock Bowers goes ahead of this 105 and it just pushes value down to you too. Thousand percent. There's a uh, there's six tight ends in the top 30 overall in warp. So <laughs> there you go. Not too he, bad. He probably he very well could go ahead of that 105 pick then. Very well could. Very well could. I like it. At the end of the day, it's a good deal. I would ask for like a third or something on top, just to like make me feel a little better. Cuck him a little give bit, extra, yeah. Give me the extra piece. You know what I mean? I, I I think this is one of those though. I would still make at the end of the day. Um, but I'm with you. Yeah. Yeah, any type of a little extra plus would have made it um too good to be true. But yeah, I, I like the flexibility aspect there. Um, all right, let's go to the dirty dozen. Okay, Mike Drake London. Okay, uh, Shannon is buying Drake London for the 109. Joe Mixon, and let's throw in the 401 while we're at it, you know? 12-team, super flex, PPR, .75, tight end premium, and it's best ball, starting 10. There is a scenario where because it's best ball um, and the 109 is kind of, it's it's right on the outside looking in, right? Right now, of like where you and I are comfortable at. Yeah, I tear it at 108. I tear it at 108. I do. (laughs) It is on the outside looking in, which isn't to say somebody does something dumb or they really (laughs) like who, if the Chiefs draft a wide receiver or the Bills and they push a Troy Franklin or somebody else up and then somebody else falls. Yeah. There's a good scenario where this does work out in the end for Shane Joe. If I'm a betting man, though, I'm probably just on the shot inside. Like, I really like Drake London, and I like getting Drake London right now before – anything really good happens with that quarterback room, right? Before they announce a Justin Fields trade, before they take a J.J. McCarthy or a Jane Daniels falls to them in the draft or they trade up or whatever the case is, I'd rather do it right now before people really catch on because he's kind of on the fringe of people who are like, ah, I still got a little bit of bad taste from the first two years, <laughs> right? Like it's just you've seen some moments, you've seen some production, but right. it's like we feel like we're just missing something. It's damn it, Arthur Smith. Damn it, Desmond Ritter. Damn it, Taylor Heineke. I want to be there before people go, oh, shit, Drake May in Atlanta? <laughs> Throwing to Drake London and Kyle Pitts with Bijan in the backfield? Oh, let's go. No Arthur Smith? Sign me up. <laughs> So I'd kind of like to be ahead of it. Joe Mixon at this point is just kind of expendable. Like he's yeah. a running back that I could buy back at any given time. Like that's not an asset. I'm, I'll get him thrown into deals if he's free, <laughs> right? but it's not a real piece. So I don't know, maybe a late second ish type. I, even then I'd probably just rather have the second right now at this time of the year. Dude, for sure. So 109, this could work out in the end for Shane Joe. So I'm not saying that there's not a, an opportunity, right? Because you are getting three pieces, the 401's kind of whatever. Uh, but you're getting two solid pieces for one. Whatever you really think about Joe Mixon and the 109 could actually, all of a sudden you luck into somebody that you didn't think was going to be there. So I understand it. I'm going to go with the Drake London side, though. Like, I think I'd be comfortable at this point, even in a best ball league, setting this away for Drizzy. Yeah, I, I think... What I will say with the best ball lens here, Mike, is that I, I could, um, depending on the situation, make a case for the for either side. Like because of the best ball elements, um, just the fact that it's three pieces over there. Like I could make the case. I think right now, even in best ball, if I had the roster constructed where it's, you know, I have a little bit of depth to play with, right? If that's the situation I'm sitting in. I'll go ahead and make this move for Drake London. Now, I will admit, though, Mike, like, if Joe Mixon has another year in the tank and 109 is, you know, a player, like right now we're projecting it's going to be someone like Brian Thomas Jr., uh, you know, Keon Coleman, something like that, where they land in a decent landing spot, even if I don't get some of that value to really fall down to me, then hell, what if that 401, you end up lucking yourself into a Tucker Craft type thing? I mean... It, I, I see the scenarios where it works out for Shane Joe. I really do. So I, I'm not going to give this one like a huge dub either way. I would say I would say right now, typically, I will would like to be on the Drake London side. But if you were someone, Mike, I think that had um, depth issues, the only way this is really going to kill you is if Drake London does step up heavily and goes into that elite range, right? If that happens, if he goes into that elite points per game scoring, you could end up really regretting this. But... Let's call it what it is, man. Unless Drake London does that, like the other side may still 
give you every bit of what Drake London's worth, if not a little bit more. So um, could, I, I, could. I'll take the Drake London side in a vacuum, but some other factors could make this very easily the other side to me. I guess the interesting thing is uh, why why invest in, in like a running back at this point in the year? Because right? because we don't want to because nobody okay. else really wants to, right? <clears throat> now that to that point, I'm with you though. Like I that if that piece, Mike, was to your point. Like if we said that his value is roughly the two twelve. If you made that the 212, like I'd rather almost all of a sudden take that other side, you know? Um, but I'm with you. The mix and piece kind of just makes me go limp, buddy. You know, it kind of really yeah. kills me. It kind of kills my, my feelings of the, the vibe of this deal. Let's talk about Jameer Gibbs in this class. All right. I mean, this is, oh, this is almost a, you know what this really feels like, Mike, this is almost like a trade show on this, this class values to the players that we currently know, man. This is what this is feeling like to me. And they've been mm-hmm. pretty close so far, honestly. Like, you could make the yep. case. 104, Jameer Gibbs, where you at, buddy? You got another dynamite close one here. And if you wanted to fight me on my final decision, do it in the comments. <laughs> you can have it out. Like, I, it's close, man. This would be a tough one. And this would be, uh, you know, the gif of uh, 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 the guy sweating just profusely. Oh, this yeah, yeah. Be, just pouring, could, sitting there. Yeah, this would be me just pouring sweat down. I'm going to go with the 104, though. <laughs> I'm going to go with the 104. I love Jameer Gibbs, and I was uh, <laughs> pounding the table for Jameer Gibbs early. Uh, I stuck with Jameer Gibbs even when, you know, certain people at South Harmon were jumping ship. Fighting you? Know, you? Not, naming, not naming names. <laughs> But at this point right now, with the way this class is, everything I've said already about you know, 105 and 106 and the tiers, I'm taking the flexibility of that draft pick at this point. Because I may not be able to get back Jameer Gibbs, right? I just send him away and somebody's going to be like, I ain't, I ain't getting him back. We're done. But it gets me into conversations potentially for things that are going to matter a lot more than Jameer Gibbs yeah. in the future. Yeah. So. I mean – I just look at it this way, right? This class, it, this is, if you just talk about the elements which are not the draft pick flexibility, like I was talking about in that Wilson trade. Like if I just kind of remove that for a second just to discuss the class. Like this class makes me feel too confident with Caleb, with, you know, Daniels, with Marvin Harrison, and with Neighbors. Like just just those four guys alone right now, to me, slot in as top 10 at their position roughly, Right. It, you could argue if they're actually 10 or 12 or whatever it's going to be. But, like, just from the, the standpoint of that, you what, you ha- what you're betting on on the Gibbs side is that this guy is the dude. Like, he is the running back. Like, you're, you're basically going kind of against the grain and saying that I understand all of that about the running back position, but Jameer Gibbs is just different. So, I, I also, we made, a, we, made a, we made a trade show not too long ago. Jameer Gibbs built different, right? I mean, I also I also kind of feel that way too. Like, I would say this is really close. This is probably about as even as it gets. Um, I'm going to lean the 104 because of flexibility. But, man, I, I'll tell you this much. What did we draft Jameer Gibbs at last year? The 106, 105, 104. Right? Like, if you're like me. Yeah, sure. But, like, the point is... It's just yeah. the next year's class, and it's right around that same range. It's This isn't crazy. Like, if you're sending one pick straight up for Gibbs, it's not crazy for Gibbs. So, man, I, I have a hard time. I'm kind of waffling over here, going back and forth. I, I want the 104 by a hair, but, man, I, I wouldn't fight you at all if you said this is what I wanted to do to go get Gibbs. I really wouldn't. The the running back warp graph, too, isn't the greatest in here. I mean, uh, Brees was RB4, and okay. he's the 19th overall player. Hmm. And he had a hell of a year. Now Gibbs was RB seven on the year, and he's down at thirty first. So if, if I'm looking at it too, like I factor the warp in, just kind of the way we are with running backs. Like Gibbs is a safer running back than you know when we talk about a Joe Mixon. Obviously, uh, <laughs> that's like it. I still really really like him, but I start to point put a little hole in it, right? It's like a, a gallon of milk, right? You start putting pinholes in it, and, you know, after a while, it's like, oh, it's empty. <laughs> That's kind of how I feel about this one. I put enough pinholes in Jameer Gibbs, at least from the value perspective, that 
I think I want the 104. I feel safer about it. Fortunately for you, Redwards, uh, Adam didn't have to convince me at last second. All right, I already went against you from the jump. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> I don't think I could really. If I was going to convince him, I could be for that 104 side. Like, I couldn't. I'm not going to be able to sway you, you know. Oh, you got to lock in this running back today. Um, I, I think probably if you if you did the warp graph, I don't know for sure, but if you did the warp graph like the second half of the year when Gibbs started playing well, he'd probably become more of a top 15, 20 player. But the point is we're not even really that as much. Like, you need Gibbs to be, when you make this investment, you do need Gibbs to be the difference maker at the position and, and cross positionally. Like, it just has to happen. Otherwise, it was a rich investment, man. 104 is not any slout, like slight pick in this class. This class is dope. So, And you are right. From week seven onwards, he was a top 15 player. Bam. So, like, that's what I'm saying. It, I can see the case either side. I really could. I, I just, right now, I'm going to lean on the flexibility right now. That's kind of, like, I default to that at this time. Now... If you're just like, you know, hey, listen, man, I need to get myself a Jameer Gibbs share. I'm looking at this team that I have, and it, it really just needs a running back. And if, if I could get that one, even though it's not the best position to invest in, I'm top of my league. Like, I, I can I can make a couple caveat places that you could make this trade. For me, I just – this is the question I'll ask, and you'd have to answer this for yourself. Like, can I, can't I always kind of take this 104 and go into a running back? Like, to me, it feels like it's easier to do that then go the other way around to get out of a yep. Gibbs. You know what I mean? That That's kind of the reason I say it at the end of the day. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I'm with you. The liquidity of the 104, more appealing to a lot more teams um, by a lot more. I mean, every single team in the league is like, <laughs> interested right. in the 104. Right, right. Not every single team in your league is going to be in a position where they want to acquire Jameer Gibbs. There's going to yeah. be some guys in some dumpster rebuilds that are like no running backs. I'd, no I'd, rather, take the, I'd rather take the early pick, yeah. I'm with you. All right. Let's discuss this one. Ooh, banger. Clay Penner and Joe Fest, Mike. So we got Lamar Jackson, Zay Flowers. So you get the Ravens stack. Um, and the third. Four, Trevor Lawrence, A.J. Brown in a second. This is a 12-team super flex. It's a half PPR. Lineup start nine. Dynasty dipshits, Mike. Tell us, who's the dipshit today? Well, you want the second over the third. Pretty easily. You want A.J. Brown over Zay Flowers? Pretty easily. Yep. But all that being said, I want Lamar Jackson way more than I want Trevor Lawrence. Yeah, lineup start nine, I think that <clears throat> is the crux of the deal, right? Like Massive. Huge. And, and especially at half PPR, Mike. Like, if you tell me full PPR, like you could tell me the difference between A.J. Brown and Zay, a little bit different. Could see it. Half PPR... I'd imagine this line is very favorable to quarterbacks. Lineup start nine already, quarterbacks, huge in Superflex, right? Mm -hmm. Half PPR, going to typically go heavier to quarterbacks. And I, I'll just say this, like Trevor Lawrence to me is still one of these quarterbacks I'm fine with. I'd much rather him be my Superflex than be my quarterback one in, a, in the team. But Lamar Jackson to me is in the clear elite range of quarterbacks without really much discussion. And Trevor Lawrence, I personally am starting to have I have him in my tier three, and I can see right now where he's, in my opinion, more on the outside looking in of the elite tier. And the difference for me in a lineup start nine there, positionally, is massive. So, like, all things considered, I would rather take the Lamar side here um, and even take that second all the way down to a third, And even though it's a, a year further out. Uh, so, that's where I lean. Now, the only caveat would be, Mike, is if you tell me that you have quarterbacks to play with. You still have two really good ones. And A.J. Brown is what really helps make this team a difference maker. Like, that's the only way I could probably argue for it. Where are you at? There's almost a full warp game difference between Lamar and, and Trevor Law? Lawrence. Okay. Yes. And that was, uh, was T-Law with a uh, – it, people hate when I hate on T-Law, but it's good. I like it. That was Trevor Lawrence with a Calvin Ridley. Now, it did kind of seem here with the news uh, this week that it doesn't feel like Calvin Ridley's coming back. <laughs> so, I would say it does not at all. <laughs> uh, A.J. Brown was really good uh, at the beginning part of the year, end part of the year, not so bad. But the difference between him and his Zay Flowers is less than a uh, less than that full game. Like, right. Quite a bit. So, yeah, I mean, you would have to probably do a first half of the season or first, you know, eight games or whatever. 
and then just to see what the splits were there because it, for the for the year, I, Zay Flowers probably is less. It, I bet you it's less than a half a half full of a win. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah, Zay was really solid. One point two four nine a warp, and uh, AJ Brown. One point nine two nine. Okay, so a little over half. So it was like you know point seven. Half. All right. Yep. First, I mean it's a it is a full point. <laughs> the full point. I mean, I, I guess I guess I guess here's what I'd say, Mike. It's I I I know how I want the Lamar side, but like if you told me you're a little more flush at quarterbacks, Lamar and uh, T. Law can step in as your quarterback too, and you really think AJ Brown is in that tier two of receivers, which is for me, Mike, there's seven there's seven receivers in tier two. Like it's it's a big difference there. So I want the Lamar side, I think. But if you told me that like based on your team build that um you know T Law can slap slot in more as your super flex, you think he's gonna have a better bounce back, you know you're bleeding some value there, but AJ Brown's gonna be what makes the difference for your team. I could see it. I just I, I think for me I typically like to have the better quarterback in a lineup start nine than, than receiver, but Again, I think this could I think this could come down to your team build, if I'm being honest. I guess technically he could be a super flex. He's got Dak on the roster too, so however <clears> you <throat> want to do that. Hey, hey, listen, man, Dak was great for the second yes. half of the season. He was I mean, he was the dude second half of the year. Yeah. Yeah. I guess there's a possibility of it. I think just with the start nine though, like I I want those running quarterbacks, man. I want those guys. Yeah, typically I want to be flush at quarter I I feel like in lineup start nine, Mike. Like, the cheat code just feels to be flush at the quarterback position. It really does. That's the way I build it, you know? Like, I got yeah. I got Lamar and Mahomes in one of them. So, well, I I don't – I actually kind of feel like this trade, though, it's – Oh, my God. What's up? To Clay Penner, the guy who got Lamar mm-hmm. in this deal. Patrick Mahomes, Lamar Jackson. Those are just two quarterbacks. That's that's what I have in my lineup starting out. Yeah, it's pretty tough. It's pretty nice. I mean, and, and he was already rocking Amon Ra and Tyreek Hill at wide receiver. So yeah, like AJ Brown. Yeah. Oh, all right. So Be so good. situationally, coming off of AJ Brown for Clay, just it was a, it was more expendable. Yeah, more more expendable to get rid of the wide receiver and upgrade <clears> himself <throat> at quarterback than vice versa. So what's Joe Fest's receivers looking like now? Uh, AJ Brown, Devontae Adams, Keenan Allen. End of list. I, I I mean, I don't feel nearly as good about my receiver room without AJ Brown in this though. Correct. I think I lean the Lamar side, Mike, all things had like considered, but like I, I think I could make the case for the Joe Fest side situationally. I think the other big part will be it can you actually make that third from twenty six now, which is a twenty five second, can you do anything with that? Um, I, I still think I'd go 60-40 to the clay side. Yeah, I would have held on to the assets too, just kind of looking at uh, Joe Fest's team, like where he was in it. Like I want to hold on to the assets that have the crazy dynasty value, right? Zay Flowers is a rookie, uh, just had a great year with him. Lamar Jackson just won an MVP, <laughs> right? I can sell people <clears throat> on Lamar or Zay Flowers if I'm kind of towards the bottom of the league. Or like kind of stuck in that middle spot where I'm trying to get out, which this roster feels a lot like. Uh, a lot easier, like to make pivots and make massive moves towards a rebuild or whatever with studs, like stars, people that are pretty attractive. You got people like me out here, like Bash and T Law and like Mad Adam, and you know you got Fizzle, Doo Doo Brown, <laughs> right? like this whole thing. And does he want to trade? Is he gonna leave? Yada yada yada. All this shit, like. I still like them. They're still good players, Adam, but there's a little more stink on them right now than the other two guys. For sure. I think, though, uh, I will say without this doo-doo Brown fizzle talk and without the the narratives, like, (laughs) A.J. Brown probably can't be had for this. Um, And, Mike, when he's six for 125, there's no fucking chance you get this deal done, right? So, like, part of it is buying into the narratives, but to your point, you probably got to sit through that narrative now. Like, you probably aren't going to move them. They're not nearly as flexible. So... I, I lean Clay side here, but um, I, I'd i say this probably isn't the best way that I would like to get better at the receiver position, tend, tend to be, but sometimes you got to make trades just to, to fit your league dynamic. Oh, wow, this is an interesting one, Mike. I just had one of my buddies texting me. I don't get this tank, Dale, for first stuff. Here we are, man. Here we are. <clears throat> Talk to me. 12-team, super flex, half PPR, half tight end premium, 
Lineup, start 10. Two guys, one taco, one tank Dell, one draft pick. You know? What a name. <laughs> one tank Dell, one draft pick. The 108, Mike, so the tier two. Like, for me, for me, this is where, like, the class has a very clear tier one and tier two. This is definitely in the tier two. And you say 108 pretty easy for you? Yes. Yeah, no question. Same. I, same. I like Tank. Um, he does make it into my tier three of receivers with a lot of guys. Uh, he's nice. Um, I'm just good. I'm good pivoting for the 108. I'm good for taking that chance to the the JJ McCarthy thing. Like if I could turn Tank Dell into a guy who gets top fifteen draft capital in a super flex league at quarterback, it's fucking done and done. I'm yeah. out. <clears throat> yeah, I'm out. Worst case, it's like okay, we talked a little bit about it. it's like a Troy Franklin type or a Keon Coleman, like somebody's got a little bit of type going to uh, going to Kansas City. If that happens, like you're talking about a guy who's getting first round NFL draft capital, not to knock Tank Dell, but you know, his draft capital is gonna stick with him for a little bit. Just a little bit. Mm-hmm. And his size is gonna knock him just a little bit, right? Just right. enough to keep him down. So if people really wanna pay top fifteen dynasty wide receiver prices for him right now. That's what that's I'll what have, he is. He's wide receiver sixteen in startups, Mike. Yeah, I'll send him away for this. I'll He's going at the four twelve right now in ADP, just to let people know. So like, good luck. Um, Give me the eight. I will say I'll take the eight here. Um, like just to try to just to try to give a caveat. What if it says the one ten? Uh, Tank Dell. Then. Like I'm, I agree. I'm more comfortable with Tank Dell. I agree. One oh nine. Is it any different? Is it still one oh nine? You still taking the risk of the that one pick? 50 50. Um, I value him pretty close to where I value Drake London in that trade we were talking about earlier. So it's a lot harder for me, but he is just a little bit below Drake. Just <clears throat> a little bit below Drizzy. I don't have such good feels about it just because much different prospects coming out, right? Like that stuff is still kind of ingrained in your DNA when you do this. Right. <laughs> and you really invest in these guys and watching film and stuff. You yep. take that was more of that guy who kind of came out of nowhere and you're like, oh shit. He can really ball. <laughs> he can really ball. Uh, Drake London, I'm sitting there, and you know, you're putting hours into your evaluation over and over, watching a guy, and you kind of you fall in love a little bit. Like it's, we tell people to be player agnostic, but it's still tough to do. It's it's hard to be a hundred percent player agnostic. So this is a confession where I still yeah. got that drizzy love in me, where it's like oh, I can't quit you. Yeah, I, I get you. you yet, boo. I get you. To me, I will go 108. I will go 109. And then one ten, I'll make the pivot to tank though. Right now, okay, what I have. that's fair. Yeah, I'd say it'd be more fifty fifty to me. You'd have to catch me on a good day or a bad day, I guess, for <clears> whichever <throat> side you were on to to get my my opinion. Because I will do shit on a random whim sometimes. Like, fuck yeah. it, <laughs> try it. Portfolio. <laughs> that's that's <laughs> how you justify everything that you think might be a bad deal, right, Adam? You're just like portfolio. Ah, my portfolio <laughs> just speaks to this, you know. <laughs> my portfolio <laughs> it's, it's, diversify. It's, my portfolio diversification is the best crutch in the world, you know. It's a great <laughs> portfolio one. right here. Just lean on it. Um, I will say, Mike, the 108 though is a hundred percent no doubter 108 to me, like. Yes, very we, close to we, that. We can discuss so. the 110, we can discuss the 109, but the 108 is a different feel, different thing to me uh, right now. In this class, because of the fact that Brock Bowers is supposed to be such a great prospect, so revered by our community, right? Like, you had that in, plus the quarterbacks, which now we're looking at a real scenario of four. Like, really, really scenario of four of them, Mike, being top 20 draft picks. Then what the fuck happens? Who knows if you know someone chases a Bo Nix? Like I've seen Bo Nix in that early second to the first. I mean, Mike, Two this is where row, it's just he's been on the mock draft show <laughs> in the first round. Two weeks, I, <clears throat> not by me. Okay, I fucking hate him. I think he's terrible. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. But, all of a, all of a sudden, if you're talking five quarterbacks in the first round, Mike, it's d- insane. D- forget it. Like it's, I already feel. I'm already starting to feel pretty confident, like that we're gonna get four. Three, I feel like almost feels locked in. So, yes, you do that in Superflex. I, I want this 108, man. There's too many good receivers in this class. There's too many good receivers in this class. Um, I feel like right now, I don't even necessarily feel like I need to pivot from Tank Dell down a year, but I'm probably looking at better draft capital. I'm not quite as attached to a guy that's undersized, needing to have C.J. Stroud. 
I, you can make the case one for one with certain receivers in this class for Tank Dell, but uh, for me, it's just the flexibility that it offers again, and the fact that I can get to I believe is a better prospect. Let me ask you, like, if a uh, we've had these conversations just over it, you know, Roman Wilson, Luke McCaffrey, Brendan Rice, um, Taj Washington has gotten some steam, Malachi Corley. Uh, Devontae Walker, Xavier Leggett, if any of those guys were to hit and produce or all of a sudden ascend to the same kind of value where Tank Dell is right now, would you be shocked? Like, is it a possibility for one of those guys to do it? Um, no, not really. Really? I mean, you say it's not a possibility at all? No, no, no. It is a possibility. I'm sorry. I, I okay. was going, yeah, it's definitely a possibility. I could totally I see you. it. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I definitely could too. And just to think about how this class is shaping up, those guys are in my tier five and tier six of my rookie there rankings go. going in. Those are guys that I'm targeting, you know, late second, early third, you know, maybe in the fourth round if one of these dudes is hanging out. Those are the kind of guys I'm looking at. 108's a completely different animal than what we're talking about for this class. So Right. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, it, 108 to me is where this one is pretty easy. Any pick 108 and better. I got, I'm not even having a discussion um, for a guy like Tank Dell. And I, and I, I, I'm, I like Tank Dell, Mike, honestly. Okay, let's let's go ahead and let's really end on a on a fire note here, buddy. First of all, we got Slapdick 2.0, all right? 12-team Superflex, best ball start 13. Puka, Nakua, Jordan Love. Where you at? Jordan Love. Jordan Love. Interesting. Start 13, best ball, huh? Yep. Jordan Love. Start 13, I'm on Puka side. Really? Yeah. Why yeah. so? Start 13. It's like, <clears throat> in start 13, it just takes so many, it's so much more about the skill players across that many spots in a best ball league than it is for the, the super flex spots. Best ball start 10, lineup start 10, start 9, we're not even having a conversation. It's Jordan Love to me by quite a bit because of this quarterback situation, right? You have two quarterback spots essentially because one of the super flexes. When we get to 13 starters, a lot of times that graph starts to really become a lot more about having the skill players than it does the quarterbacks. Basically what I would be doing in a start 13 here is understanding I'm getting more of a hammer in Puka and going to, um, like I got to probably patchwork together my back end of my, my quarterback room. Um, I, here's the reality. These are both start two or start two. These are both second round startup picks. I, I'm not going to tell you like you're wrong, guaranteed wrong to have either one of them. Like I could make the case if you if you team build correctly around it. I think in start thirteen, I'd I'm more comfortable having more skill players than having necessarily all the hammers at quarterback in a start thirteen best ball. And I can't disagree with your logic because it is sound, backed by fact, a warp, etc. However you want to look at it. It's true. Uh, my dissension is quarterback market tougher to get into. <laughs> I can find somebody along the lines of a Puka or similar. If I got to go quarterback shopping to plug a hole in my super flex or my QB one slot, a little tougher, a little Fair. tougher. So if I'm sitting in this startup draft, even though you're, you're a thousand percent right, Adam, I just couldn't do it. I couldn't take the the wide receiver over the quarterback. <clears throat> a wide receiver in this range. Now, if it was, you know, the tier one guys, not that Puka's bad or anything, but he's he's not tier one for me, okay? If it's the tier one guys, if it's Jefferson, Chase, CD, it's, it's one of those guys over <clears throat> Jordan Love. No question about it. Can I tell you the truth? The only thing keeping Puka from that tier is what? Draft capital. Say it with the chest. I, oh, there, there's a there's a chance. Speaking that, of which, speaking of which, I should have put Amon Ra in that category too. I was gonna say because Amon Ra is Amon Ra and Puka really, Mike. Now, obviously, Puka Nakua, if he had draft capitals, and same thing with Amon Ra, they're totally different conversations, and everybody knows that they were, they were never a cheap get. Um, I don't know, Mike. I'm, I'm I'm bullish on Puka too, and now. You can tell me all about my Jordan Love hate. Uh, listen, I, it was there. It was strong. I have moved on, okay? Like, Jordan Love is a top 10 quarterback in Dynasty. So, I don't know what you want from me, all right? I've come around, but here, I'll, I'll, I'll stop the bleeding. Mike, if you told me straight up, like, if this is a best ball start 10, I'd probably say I'd lean Jordan Love. If this is a lineup start 10 or start 9, I'm, I'll take Jordan Love. 
best ball start thir- my best ball that's the thing about best ball start 13 too like dude i'm probably comfortable having like nine or ten really good receivers in that type of a format and then then here's the thing for me probably in a best ball start 13 i'll tell you the truth b hall i'm probably tearing down off of puka if i can i'm probably like looking to now let me get two let me see if i can get a tank dell and a Brandon Ayuk or a Tank Dell and a Drake London or a Tank Dell and a Rashi Rice type thing, right? Like I'm I'm looking to go ahead and make this receiver room plentiful now. Yep. That's fair too. <clears throat> fair too. That's probably the move I'm making. But I mean, what are we arguing really? I mean, we're talking about a couple picks difference in the second round of a startup, right? Like this yep. is just the way you want to build your team. And it if you go away I will say though, the problem with going away from a Jordan Love, sometimes it is hard to backfill at quarterback, right? So if you're gonna do that, you better be, you know, making sure you can handle. You better have some stuff already <laughs> there, or yeah. a plan or, in place on how yeah. to do it. If you made this trade at like in the middle of the startup or whatever, like yeah, make sure you're getting some backfills. You know, and it's not yeah. gonna feel the greatest to these backfill guys, right? You're talking like the Genos of the world, the Will Levises, the Russell Wilsons, but you got to do it. The Danny Dimes. Looking through all B Hall's leagues, I, I realize he plays in far too many shit leagues with us. <clears throat> Oh, yes, he does. <laughs> this guy never goes anywhere. <laughs> he's, he's all over the place. Uh, he's doing okay at quarterback, though, by the way. Oh, if if you have enough quarterback depth, I'm definitely comfortable with this then, for sure. Unless you you absolutely despise Bryce Young. I mean, I don't love him, but I don't despise him. No. Kyler, Bryce, and Kirk Cousins. I'm, Three guys I'm, with jobs. Best ball start 13, I'm perfectly com- I'm more than comfortable with that, Mike. And then I'm looking in the waiver wire all the time. Like, you know, add my Josh Dobbs throughout the year. Add these guys throughout the year when I can, you know. If you're uh, your tit sucker here, though, you didn't have a quarterback. This is probably pretty easily. I'll take the Jordan. If I had no quarterbacks at all, this is uh, his only one. quarterbacks were Aaron Rodgers and Aiden O'Connell and Mac Jones. That's a very easy tr- Jordan Love pivot. I think this. His, is, I, his, I think this makes his, this makes sense for both sides. His earliest draft pick is the 108. So could he get a McCarthy? Yes, maybe. He, you know, or maybe not. Next thing happened. But yeah, but I wouldn't feel very confident about it. I wouldn't be taking the 108 and being like, I'm getting a quarterback. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> so if I had to do this, right? Like, that's probably what I do. <clears throat> He'd send it away, Puka, but it is what it is. This one's fair for both sides. I think it's uh it's close enough. I will say in a vacuum, I'd rather have less quarterbacks and more skill players in the start thirteen. Um yep. but, but again, this this would come down to my team building, honestly, based on what you told me there. Um not one of the ones that always happens. A lot of times we end on some really egregious shitty ones. Yeah, you know, people just tearing Caps. each other's eyes out. But I mean, we're talking two second-round picks in a startup. Their guys are going three, four picks apart in startup drafts right now. Yep. Their top, you know, ten locks at their position. I, I can make the case either way, man. I can make the case either fucking way. I really could. I'm with you, buddy. That was a good one to add on. Good trade show all over. <clears throat> good conversation. I mean, Mike, I don't think we had a – now, there were some trades where you and I can say, ah, oh, we'll take that side. Yes. But there was not a single trade in this trade – Um. Outside of the Hertz one, which even then, like, market's not going to be on our side. Like, every Correct. single one of these, none of them were, like, egregiously bad. That's the way I'll say it. That yep. that might be a first. Is that the first? I think that's the first time we haven't had one that's just, like, some. Well, there's at least one or two trades. Like, what are we doing? Just go to the next fucking trade. This is terrible. It's a perfect perfect trade show through a no-hitter. Perfect game. I guess that's it, what happens when you're coming off of a, you know, a, a no-week before, right? You get to kind of cherry-pick all the picks. Hey, all shout out to Blitz for doing a good job picking them this time too. And and Blitz wasn't a part of any of them. Man, I'll he, tell he you what, we, we might we might need Blitz to take a week off every now and again. You know, <laughs> <laughs> look at the kid doing well. <laughs> like Adam said, just a reminder too: if you want your deals featured, patreon.com forward slash South Harmon five dollar tier get you the trade show channel. You can post it there. Uh, also, just letting you guys know, if you like the in depth thing, when we're doing a little bit of digging here, DynastyTeamReviews.com. Boom. Dynasty Team Reviews. Dot com. Whether it's me, whether it's Adam, whether it's both of us, whether it's Koopa, whether it's Eric, or you just want a free-for-all, you can leave it on anyone. Starting at $40, you can get your team reviewed 
at least 30 minutes. Uh, if it's me and Adam, uh, we have a tendency to go far longer than that for because yeah. we never shut the fuck up. <laughs> yep. But <laughs> Eric, Koopa, they're doing a fantastic job pumping them out as they come in. Enjoy listening to their breakdowns on how they would help their roster. So if you need that little extra, you know, the, the little extra. It's like the movie Waiting, right? I got to throw movie quotes, quotes in all the time. What a great right, movie. Team? The difference between <laughs> ordinary and extraordinary. It's a little extra. <laughs> it's a little extra. <laughs> Let's go out there, boys. The bat wing. If you know, you know. I prefer the brain. I'm a big <laughs> fan of the brain. The brain. Absolutely. <laughs> the brain. Have, Three I kicks. I'm too fat to pull off the goat. <laughs> Three kicks. <laughs> Three kicks. <laughs> Love them. Go check out Waiting, uh, old school movie with uh, with Ryan Reynolds in it, man. Love that. I think it, believe it was 05. But uh, check that out. Make sure you're checking out Patreon.com as well as the team reviews. Other than that, we'll see you back here. Same time, same place next week. As long as you provide the trades for the Dynasty Trade Show, we're out of this thing. Peace. Peace.